has it been tough maintaining business with this kind of uh, construction? Yeah, definitely, because you know why um, they take away the biggest parking lot and customer can't get no no parking. Every time they park, the ticket man come and ticket ticket the people them so it's like they're not feel comfortable coming around no more, you know what I mean? Oh, you mean so the city, to add insult to injury, they've got the Green Hornets out giving parking tickets to people that want to patronize you? Right now, they're kind of quiet down still with the ticket because they realize most of the business are closed, you know what I mean? So. David Menzies for Rebel News here in the little Jamaica area of Toronto. And folks, before I get to my report, if you can, please go to journalistdefensefund.com, make a donation so that we can continue to bring you the other side of the story. Well, folks, as I said, this is what's known as little Jamaica. It used to be a thriving community here in West End Toronto. Uh, once upon a time, you'd come by and you'd see um, jerk chicken being cooked on the sidewalks. You'd hear the rhythm of calypso and reggae music. But there's not a whole lot of that anymore. Um, thanks primarily to two things that have really taken a toll on this community. One is this construction project for the Eglinton LRT, the light rail transit. If you can imagine, folks, this is what this street, Eglinton Avenue West, has looked like since 2011. The project was supposed to have been completed already. Now they're saying it might be finished in 2022. And then, of course, there was the Wuhan virus pandemic. And this one-two punch to the gut has taken an enormous toll on Little Jamaica. Uh, something like 140 businesses have gone under. Now on Saturday there was a rally in um, support of this area of town. Uh, it went ugly when someone who was not connected with the, uh, the rally jumped on a car. He had to be tasered and later subdued by police. A little bit of a melee broke out. Seven officers had to be treated in hospital. Uh, that is despicable and it shouldn't be, um, there should be zero tolerance for that. But the fact of the matter is, the people here, they were not Black Lives Matter protesters, they were not people looking to tear down statues, they were simply people trying to get little Jamaica back on its feet again after these horrible problems that are the fault of nobody, but well, in the case of the LRT government, um, I can tell you folks that the only thing that the city has done and Metrolinx, which is responsible for this LRT fiasco, the city chipped in something like $100,000 for Little Jamaica to bolster its online presence. And um, Metrolinx has donated something like $10,000 a year to the local business improvement association. So in other words, yeah, chump change. In any event, we thought we would walk by some of the retailers here and the uh, barber shops that make up Little Jamaica. And when I say barber shops, they're almost like social clubs. They're the heart and soul of the community. And see what the people living here and trying to eke out a living here have to say about this. It just seems heartbreaking how many businesses are no longer operating. That's a business last year, man. All kind of business go down. We've heard 140 businesses have closed their doors. Close the door. You can see on that side go down. All of these things block off all of the business there. Yeah. Now, there was a big rally on Saturday night in support of the community. I mean, there, somebody not associated with the rally got violent, yes, but... Well, a young man, he had mental issue. Yes. And he jumped on a car and destroy the whole thing. Yeah, that, that's sad too because really I, I, I understand the message was that these people, uh, it, it's like a wake up call they were trying to get out get there. The people them, get the business them to go in as nothing going on. But some bad thugs, kind of mental. Has it been tough maintaining business with this kind of uh, construction? Yeah, definitely because you know why um, they take away the biggest parking lot and customer can't get no no parking. Every time they park, the ticket man come and ticket, 
ticket the people them so it's like then I feel comfortable coming around no more, you know what I mean? Oh, you mean so the city, to add insult to injury, they've got the Green Hornets out giving parking tickets to people that want to patronize you? Right now they're kind of quiet down still with the ticket because they realize most of the business are closed, you know what I mean? So. And we heard something like 140 businesses in this stretch have gone under since this transit project uh, started. Tell me, sir, are you hopeful this thing is ever going to be completed? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to complete because there's a lot of money done, done put inside it already, so you have to complete, you know? Yeah. And as soon as the, everything clean up, they say that the subway is going to finish, finish um, 2021. Oh, I heard 2022. <laughs> 2022. So they're gone way back again. Huh? Do you think that the city should compensate the businesses, the ones that still remain here? Because this construction project, this Wuhan virus pandemic, it's not their fault that they had to endure this. No, no, it's not their fault. No, no, the, the pandemic and, and stuff like that is not their fault. When we reached out to Metrolinx, the entity that is responsible for the Eglinton LRT, this is what they had to say. Metrolinx understands that construction of the Eglinton Crosstown LRT project has an impact on people traveling along Eglinton Avenue. Vehicles, transit users, pedestrians, cyclists, adjacent residential neighborhoods and on the businesses and most especially the small local shops who may have already been living through difficult times. We also understand that this construction has impacted neighborhoods differently along the corridor. This includes Little Jamaica. Construction of the Eglinton Crosstown LRT combined with other factors such as future development and the COVID-19 pandemic have intensified these impacts. Metrolinx continues to work closely with the BIAs, local neighborhood groups, and the City of Toronto to understand how we can work together to provide real solutions. So in other words, folks, there is definitely awareness of the problem, but when it comes to any kind of tangible solutions or offers of compensation, that is noticeably missing. Well, as you can see, folks, here in Little Jamaica, it is a situation abnormal, as has been the case for so many years. And, you know, we just saw a poster for the Rally for Change. That was the rally that was here on Saturday. And uh, here are some of the demands. Uh, one was to officially rename this area as Little Jamaica or Little Caribbean, uh, implement beautification projects to highlight Little Jamaica's uh, heritage and also uh, under the topic of financial assistance uh, the group is seeking rental assistance and a moratorium on commercial evictions extended for the duration of construction and you know what folks uh, I don't think those are outrageous demands this is a community that has been devastated as far as I can tell by bureaucratic incompetence in terms of getting a project done and of course something the entire planet is struggling with the Wuhan virus out of China so I think it's only fair that the city take heed of these demands and try to make life here in little Jamaica a little more palatable at least for those merchants that still remain for Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, if you can, please go to journalistdefensefund.com, make a donation so that we can continue to bring you the other side of the story.